Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about fat embolism and fat embolism syndrome. Before we start, there is a disclaimer. This video is for informative purposes only. I am advising you to refer to the main textbook or sources that is used in each teaching center respectively. Thank you. Now let's begin. Again, what is embolism? Embolism is a blockage of blood vessel by solid, liquid or gas at site distant from the site of its origin. What is fat embolism syndrome? It is a clinical syndrome that follows an identifiable result, which releases fat into the circulation, resulting in pulmonary and systemic symptom. Or another definition is, it is a systemic manifestation of fat embolism within the microcirculation. Pathophysiology of fat embolism There are two theories for formation of fat embolism that is A. Mechanical theory B. Biochemical theory For A. Mechanical theory It is due to obstruction of systemic vasculature by fat embolism that occurs from direct release of bone marrow into the venous system following trauma. An increase in the intramedullary pressure following trauma leads to the release of fat through open venous sinusoids. The embolized fat obstructs the capillary bed. For B, biochemical theory, the inflammatory response to the trauma causes the release of free fatty acid, FFA, from the bone marrow into the venous system. The elevated free fatty acid as well as the inflammatory mediators cause damage to the capillary beds. An increase in free fatty acid induces inflammation within the lung. Fat embolism syndrome commonly seen after A. Orthopedic trauma Example, fracture of the long bones, femur or tibia, pelvic fracture, multiple fracture involving both upper limb or lower limb. B. Non-trauma condition Example, intramedullary rim or unrim nailing after fracture fixation. Example, in a femur fracture fixation. After hip or knee arthroplasty, in burn patient, pricotitic patient, during liposuction or post-liposuction procedure, bone marrow transplant procedure. Fat embolism syndrome remains a clinical diagnosis. But laboratory findings aid in the confirmatory and excluding other differential diagnoses. We can use a GUT criteria, Schoenfeld Fat Embolism Syndrome Index, Lindic Index, to help in diagnosing fat embolism syndrome. I usually use a GUT criteria for diagnosing of fat embolism syndrome. I just need one major and four minor criteria. In major criteria, it involves either presence of PTK rash, respiratory insufficiency or hypoxia, FAO2 less than 60 mm mercury or FIO2 more than 0.4 kPa, cerebral depression unrelated to hypoxemia or head injury. Minor criteria involve either heart rate more than 110 beats per minute, temperature more than 38.5 degrees Celsius, retinal changes of fat via fundoscopy, renal changes either patient have oliguria or anuria, jaundice. Laboratory investigation include acute fall in hemoglobin, more than 20% during admission, 
sudden thrombocytopenia, more than 50% drop from baseline. High ESR, more than 71 mm per hour. Fat globus present in urine. For Schoenfeld, Fat Embolism Syndrome Index. It ranks the sign and symptom of Fat Embolism Syndrome in relation to incidence of presentation. Score more than 5 is required for diagnosis of Fat Embolism Syndrome. Sign and Symptom and Score For Sign and Symptom, Petical Rash scored 5, Diffuse Alveolar Infiltrate scored 4, Hypoxemia with PaO2 less than 70 mm mercury scored 3, Confusion scored 1, Fever more than 38 degree scored 1, Heart rate more than 120 beats per minute scored 1, Respiratory rate more than 30 per minute score 1. For lindic criteria, it based on the respiratory system alone, whereby there is a sustained PoO2 less than 8 kPa, sustained PCO2 more than 7.3 kPa, sustained respiratory rate more than 35 per minute, in spite of sedation, increase, increase work of breathing, dyspnea, or tachycardia, and anxiety. For the lungs, the radiological investigation we can request for chest X-ray. But the chest X-ray might be normal or the changes might be subtle. In later stage, chest X-ray will show a snowstorm pattern with diffuse bilateral infiltrates. It may be complicated with infection or pulmonary edema. CT scan is better in making the diagnosis. Three patterns most frequently observed A. Ground glass changes with geographic distribution B. Ground glass with interlobular sector thickening and C. Nodular opacity. For brain, CT scan is often normal or demonstrate edema. MRI may show four kinds of vasogenic edema in a random distribution, embolic, but classically a star field pattern may be seen. For treatment and management, the prophylaxis, immobilization and early internal fixation of fracture is very helpful. Fixation within 24 hours will reduce the risk of ARDS by 5 times. Continuous pass oximeter monitoring in high risk patients help in detecting desaturation early allowing early institution of oxygen, usage of high dose of corticosteroid is still questionable, a lot of controversies. Supportive medical care, the maintenance of adequate oxygen and ventilation either by high flow mass or mechanical ventilation. Maintenance of Hemodynamic stability by adequate hydration. Administration of blood and blood products as clinically indicated. Adequate nutrition is helpful in reducing the risk of fat embolism syndrome. A conclusion. Fat embolism syndrome is considered a little complication of trauma. However, Early diagnosis and timely management can result in favorable outcome. Immobilization of the fracture segment and early fixation of the fracture are the best strategies to prevent fat embolism syndrome. 
But please note that fat embolism syndrome still can occur even after the fracture fixation. Postoperative patient must be monitored closely and signs of hypoxia or altered sensorium should raise the suspicion of fat embolism syndrome and be treated accordingly. I want to add in an additional note. So the question that can be asked is, one, when is the onset of fat embolism syndrome? It typically occurs within 24 hours to 72 hours after trauma. It also can occur as early as 12 hours and can be delayed up to 2 weeks post-injury. Question number 2. Where is the particular rash usually appears? Usually at the neck, conjunctiva, chest, axilla, upper limb. Usually, it will appear within 24 to 36 hours and disappear within one week. It results from occlusion of dermal capillaries by fat globus and extravasation of red blood cells. The third question. At which site the first particular rash will appear? Of course, in the conjunctiva. What's the reason? Because it is the smaller capillaries. In conjunctiva, this, the particular rash is the first to appear, but the last to disappear. The fourth question. Why the particular rash appear at the chest or trunk, not at the back, posterior? Non-dependent area. Eh? Reason? We usually lie in a supine position, so usually fat on the line, we float away from gravity and get lodged in the anterior chest wall. 5. Last question and a controversial question. How do you manage a close fracture mid shaft femur that develops fat embolism syndrome? Would you do a upper reduction and plating? or intramedullary nailing. I give you time to think. What would you choose and why? Prepare to defend your answer. Okay, I'll tell you about my answer. To be safe, I would choose open reduction and plating of the femur. Yes, I know intramedullary nailing is a standard method in treating a femoral shaft fracture with high union rate and less risk of infection. Intermandolin nailing provides sufficient torsional stability and bending stiffness. But the problem with the intramandolin nailing is it may cause second heat and stimulate systemic inflammatory response and fat embolism from the mandolin canal at the fracture site. And the fracture and the fat can be embolized, especially during rimming, thereby will induce a secondary pulmonary complication to the injured chest and head. For upper reduction and plating, because of its non-interference with medullary canal, primary plate fixation may have lower risk of cardiac pulmonary complication. In conclusion, I will choose the upper reduction and plating of the femur. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you can learn something from this video. Till we meet again. Bye.